Hey folks, is alcohol okay to consume on a regular basis? Because there's a whole group of people that say, yeah, in moderation, that's defined as two drinks for men or one for women. In moderation, that's fine. I'm gonna address that today. Are there benefits that exceed the risks of drinking alcohol? Also, Jenny Herbachik, Nurse Jenny, is gonna be here to talk about formaldehyde and its ability to induce cancer. Daniel's gonna be here with a special exercise for you, but as we open today's show, let's do a few minutes with Scott Olson. He is the president of a company called Poop Doc. Bloating, belching, gas, constipation, indigestion, GERD, diarrhea. You'll want to stay tuned to today's show. This program is brought to you by Poop Doc, the number one place for the number two problem. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists and soon you too will know the cause. You know, many years ago, right here on Know the Cause, we brought you a product called Poop Doc. And you know, you guys gave it thumbs up. I gave it thumbs up, we vetted them long ago. Folks, I used to work in a hospital. Scott is the president. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, Doug. Scott, I used to work in a hospital, and I used to tell people you need fiber. And so they'd buy fiber. And very often, folks, it just sits in a lump there, right? The fiber, when mixed with good antifungals, fenugreek and podarco and so forth, becomes an entirely different product. So uh, Poop Doc is a product I am across the board recommending to people who might bloat, belch, have gas, constipation, diarrhea, stabilize what's inside. Your product was developed many, many years ago and has been quite a hit for this reason. It works. When you and I talked on the phone five, six, seven, eight years ago, um, you said you just need to try it. So I'd recommend it to friends. And I started taking it. And what a difference. This is a different kind of fiber. How is yours different, Scott, from others? Typically, you're going to find um, a plain psyllium mm -hmm. uh, blend in a health food store and supermarket. Most of the time, you're going to get a lot of bloating from that. We need the fiber. We need that supplement. But, but the bloat, the slow transition, 40 times its weight in water, just to move through the... Yeah. Through, you know, so people are going, I don't know if I want to take it, but it's critically important. So we figured that out a long time ago, blended it with five different natural anti-inflammatory herbs so it calms and soothes mm -hmm. that inflammation and you get smooth transition and very productive result. Tell me about that middle bottle there we just looked at, formula number one. What is that? Formula number one is an ozonated inorganic magnesium compound. Unique. It yeah. works when everything doesn't. So we get the train wrecks. We get people that, look, this is, if I had a, a dollar or maybe even a nickel for every time I got a call, that's yeah. where they said, uh, look, I've tried everything. Yeah. Is this really gonna work? And therein lies, I think, why we got together many years ago. I had seen so many fibers let people down. And those fibers went from $19 a jar, you guys know, to 24 to 29 um, Thank you for your pricing on these. That's amazing. So with the, with the inorganic product in the middle, the Formula One, might I swallow that? I call that a blasting cap. <laughs> might I swallow that along with a shaker of the daily fiber? Some people do that. I actually, I'm, I'm a lot like you. I okay. don't need right. the encouragement yep. of Formula yep. One. Same, yep. Right? But a lot of people do, Scott. I mean, did you, you came up with this stat one time on this show and we checked it out. 60 million people constipated. Oh, how do you feel at the end of that day knowing you'll get out of bed, be constipated tomorrow? Standard American diet, the acronym is SAD. Is that fitting? It sure is, and they're, guess what? They're not out there wearing T-shirts saying, I'm constipated, let's talk about it. Yeah, nobody wants it's to talk about it. It's a silent sufferer. I have a friend who's a physician in Los Angeles who tells me, they'll talk about anything except the gut. Exactly. He has to encourage, so are you bloating, belching, constipated? Oh uh, yeah. 
talk to me, you know, tell me. <laughs> well, I'm going to the bathroom for four days now. And some people go two weeks and folks, sometimes doctors have that same problem with their stressful lifestyle and so forth and diet. And so they don't need to talk about it. The bowel should move every day. Absolutely. And yet it doesn't. Some people say two, three times a day. Yeah, uh, one, after, one time after each major meal. Okay, so major meal would be, you know, if I grab a half a salad for lunch, that's not a major meal. It's really, it's a problem that Scott's company really brought to the forefront. There were billboards in Phoenix, Arizona, where Scott's from, that said, you know, the number one place, poop doc, for the number two problem. You can't move your bowels. Toxicity develops when you don't go to the bathroom every day. And that toxicity due to gut leakage, we've talked about this, the leaky gut syndrome uh, on this show, that toxicity means sometimes toxins from old putrefied food are getting through and you look older and you feel bad and you put on weight and so forth. <clears throat> There's something I haven't talked with Scott, but I want to do in the next segment. Uh, a couple of years ago, you came out with something really unique. I'll never forget the story of the doctor you met and how this formula went together. It is something your doctor and you know about. It's called probiotics, and this company has a unique one. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And welcome back, friends. Scott, uh, Scott Olson from Poop Doc. The name of the company is Poop Doc. It's a limited liability corporation out of Phoenix. I was born in Phoenix. Did oh, you know that? No, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. My dad was a policeman. The story is I was born in a police car. He was wow. in Tempe, Arizona. He was a policeman going to college here. But at any rate, I digress. Scott has the most unique company. You know why? And you know why it's grown the way it has? It works. There are so many times I recommend to people, look, disease starts here in the gut, so go down and get yourself a fiber. And they'll walk into one of these cut rate pharmacies or something and find a $5 on sale, because it's been there two years, a $5 you know, bottle of fiber and they start taking it and they just don't feel well. What you put in here is really brilliant. I want to talk to you a little bit about gastric juices, you know, the, the acid in our stomach. Your product seems to uh, get through all of that and work just well. You've developed a probiotic that is unique. Why was this important in your business? You know, as we grow, we learn. Hmm. And the more you learn, the more you want to learn. And the more hmm. you read, and the more you're listening, and then, you know. Yeah. So I, I meet people in the strangest place. It's, it's really divinely set up. I've, it's, when I look back, I'm going, how did that happen? I met by accident one of the five original pioneers in probiotic microbiome research. That's no accident. <laughs> That's a hand of God uh, saying, here you go. <laughs> when I got off the phone with her, I'm going, you know, you know, am I, is this, did this really happen? Yeah. So long story short, after uh, years of communicating and having conversations, she has given me the jewels, the gems, the, the superheroes, the Olympians that won every race, all put together of her 50 years, and this goes in extensive background, some parts I can't sure. even talk about for security reasons, that this actual military grade of probiotic is so effective for the gut, because our, our gut is really the center of our universe. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, we, th we think about the, uh, the Star Wars missile defense system. Sure. This is the greatest defense system right here. And every time, I mean, you know, we, we have antibiotics, we, sometimes we have to have them. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people don't even know they're taking probiotics, like last night's dinner. Yep. Three quarters of all the antibiotics sold are sold to feedlot animals. That's right. When that meat goes to the grocery store, it doesn't butcher out, it doesn't cook out, and we absorb it. And then you think about the World Health Organization statement for this year. One out of two men and one out of three women sometime in their lifetime will get cancer. That's astronomical. That's off the charts. But if we have the most strategic defense me mechanism for us that's defending our health and it's, it's annihilated, 
It's like it's like getting an atom bomb when there's right. antibiotic antibiotics because right. it's might right. kill the bad kill the good guys exactly. and the bad guys. So along comes this probiotic and this development. Is the acid in the belly um, how strong is that acid? So one of the things that caught my attention was how much of those live bacteria is going to survive indeed the stomach acid. Right. So I was on PubMed and I wind up doing a little research. They took two razor blades, put it in stomach acid, and in 24 hours, 40% of that steel, stainless steel, was dissolved. Okay. So my question is, whatever probiotics and however many billion you're taking, how many are surviving through the stomach acid and arriving alive at the gut? One of the characteristics that we have in ours, just one of the many characteristics, is its, its acid resistance. See, this, I had never heard that, but I don't doubt it at all. I mean, God put us together right. And interestingly, Scott, in the years we've known each other, we have now understand 70% of your immune system is in the gut. When this works, so does all this, the brain and everything else. Tremendous company, Poop Doc. Uh, thank you for coming in today. Veronica's doing okay? She's doing fantastic. She is a doll. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Just wonderful. Uh, folks, Poop Doc is the name of the company. We'll get you more information uh, at the end of the show. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Doc. Jenny Herbacek is a registered nurse. I just lectured with her at the uh, Cancer Symposium in San Diego. She's talking today about formaldehyde and the cancer risks. Watch this. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. Let's talk about formaldehyde, the toxic gas and chemical that we often think of as being used in mortuaries and medical laboratories. Did you know that it's listed as a probable carcinogen by the EPA and a known human carcinogen by the National Toxicity Program? And formaldehyde can easily make its way into our homes. It's often found in that pressed wood furniture, plastic grocery bags, paint, nail polish, cosmetics, hair products, and permanent pressed draperies and clothing. So what can we do to limit our exposure? We can get plants. Plants are one of the most effective ways to remove harmful chemicals from indoor air, and specifically ferns. They're thought to remove formaldehyde the most effectively. Chrysanthemums will do a great job also. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. You know, in my younger days, I had an office in Chicago, New York, San Diego, and so forth, and I was on an airplane a lot. And although I knew about fungus, mold, mildew, I didn't know much about mycotoxins at that time, but I would get on an airplane, and I'm telling you guys, nobody is safe. I have control issues. Nobody's safe on that airplane unless I have access, in case the plane starts going down, to pulling the stick back. I'm just, I struggle with that. But I would have, in, uh, I'm going back 30 years, I would have a glass of red wine because I'm not a good flyer, and it would really slow me down, okay? I don't do that anymore. I think people, look, be careful with drinking in your 50s. Be extra careful drinking in your 60s. And if you're drinking in your 80s, you need to teach me something, right? What I talk about on this show is mycotoxins. The two biggest links to mycotoxins we have are antibiotics. You saw in a previous study, four out of five Americans, 240 million Americans in 2013 were prescribed an antibiotic. We have a lot of exposure to those mycotoxins. Antibiotics, penicillium is the mold, the poison it makes is called penicillin. Thank God it's a poison. It kills bacteria, right? Tiny organisms in tiny doses. My concern is when we're on lots and lots and lots of antibiotics over an extended period of time. And ditto with alcohol. So I haven't had alcohol for a long time. My wife and I just gave it up a long time ago. But I gotta tell you, we're exposed to a lot of it. You don't believe me? Let's go down this road, okay? It, this is mind-boggling. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I'm just gonna read it because I'll have some negative comments if I didn't. Having a drink or two, this is Time Magazine a couple of year, or a year ago. Having a drink or two a day can be a good thing, at least as far as the heart is concerned. Okay, what does American Heart say about that? Oh, here we have a quote. So all people, for all people, alcohol can lower blood sugar. Don't laugh, Doug. Uh, so for people with diabetes, it's recommended that they drink alcohol with a meal. 
Drinking a glass of wine is good for the heart in the sense that the main mechanism by which alcohol protects the heart is increasing good cholesterol. Un okay, never mind. In general, alcohol does not seem to have an adverse effect unless an excessive amount is used, says the American Heart. Finally, they said something I believe in. Now they're gonna counter themselves as I continue, but what's an excessive amount? How much alcohol is okay? This really blew my mind. How much is okay to drink daily? American Heart Association, the same group, says moderate alcohol intake is one four ounce glass of wine daily for women, and two, I wonder why they say women drink wine and men drink beer, and two, 12 ounce beers daily for men. But in a year, this is equal to 58 bottles of wine if you're a female, and 68 gallons, look at this, John put this together, ladies, Here's how many bottles of wine in a year, 58 of them, the American Heart Association, and by the way, the American Cancer Association, say is okay to drink. How about men? You ever have a five gallon jug at home? How about this, 68 gallons of beer. These are people that are hired to protect our health. This is American ticker and American cancer. Oh. Folks, I think we have too many people who drink too much in those organizations. Just gonna say it. Otherwise, this would be listed as insanity. I don't think I drink that much water a year, but to drink that much beer, you know where I'm going. Be careful. Folks, listen with this, not with this. So many of you know when you drink even a glass of wine, tachycardia, your heart starts bumping around in its chamber, right? Or the next day your skin itches, or you don't sleep well that night, you know? Or you wake up with horrible breath. These are all signs to, okay, stop it, no moss. Maybe it got us through in our earlier years when the kids were up all night and so forth. Don't do it if you don't have to, okay? And so this is American Heart saying 68 gallons of beer, 58 bottles of wine is absolutely fine. Can you see one of you after, can, I would like to follow a woman for 10 years who has drunk 580 bottles of wine. And that's okay from a heart standpoint or a cancer standpoint. Okay, let's talk about booze and tickers. That's your heart. This is fascinating because the same group now says this. Drinking alcohol provides no heart health benefit, new study shows. University of Pennsylvania. Look at American Heart. Moderate drinking in later years may damage the heart. By the way, didn't we just learn that antibiotics as a child now induce gut problems we have learned 30, 40 years later, which I said many years ago. Moderate alcohol consumption may increase risk of atrial fibrillation in people with heart disease, McMaster's University, 2012. But there's more, that's the heart risk. Here's the cancer risk. A review of evidence published by the journal Addiction also says, studies claim alcohol can help protect against heart disease should be treated with skepticism. Don't believe it. These studies that say alcohol is good for the heart should be treated with skepticism. So says WebMD. A new analysis finds compelling evidence that drinking alcohol can cause at least seven types of cancer. I mean, it's unbelievable. It found that heavy drinkers are the highest risk, but even low drinkers to moderate drinkers are more likely to get certain cancers than non-drinkers. From a public health standpoint, it's estimated to have caused approximately half a million deaths from cancer in the year 2012. Can I just tell you folks, here's my take on it, just for whatever it's worth, I'm not a doctor, I'm just reporting this to you. If you've taken lots of antibiotics as a child, maybe acne, maybe tummy problems, maybe inner ear, throat, sinus problems, and in your 20s and 30s you really overdid it, um, be careful. It's really important that you supplement. Find supplements that help the liver. Uh, acetyl L-cysteine, regactive, um, you know, milk thistle, right, dandelion. These are products that will really help you nutritionally. And then you gotta turn off the tap. If you don't drink anymore, is that okay with you? I have found it suits me just perfect. Just my take on this. You know, God made us with all of these rotations, right? Shoulders, elbows, hips, and so forth. Here comes Daniel to talk about a hip exercise for the rotator in your hip.
I remember visiting Mama Reba when she was in the hospital having her hip replacement surgery done, and I will never forget her. She said, don't get this surgery. If you can ever avoid it, it is super painful. It was necessary and she needed it. Thank God she was able to get it. But if we can do anything to you know, mitigate the need to go in for surgery, let's do that. Let's help ourselves. Let's not you know, encumber ourselves and our family with, uh, with uh, you know, surgeries and things like that that aren't essential. Well, what can we do to prevent this? Well, we're gonna strengthen our hips, okay, by using our little resistance bands. So sitting down on any chair or floor or you know, even a stoop like this, Posture is perfect, shoulder blades come down, number one, shoulder blades come back, number two, and I squeeze my buns, number three. So you'll notice I'm slightly leaned back, but my posture is tall. Now with my right or left hand, I'm just gonna grab in the middle, creating some form of tension like this, and I'm gonna let my knees go away from each other, just like this. Now, your body's gonna wanna lean over like this. Don't let it, the whole point is to have perfect posture while you're moving your legs out like this. And you'll feel an immediate burn in your hips, your hips and your gluteus medius. And basically that's just the outer portion of your buns. So sitting up tall, I'm really trying to see how far I can get my hips away from each other, or my knees rather away from each other, but I'm feeling an immediate and instant burn. Now the areas, the muscles that are getting strong are also gonna help to lock my hip in place. So if God forbid you ever do fall later on in life, this area here is gonna be strong and it's gonna be supple and it's not gonna be brittle and break, which is gonna require, you guessed it, a surgery. So these little resistance bands are so helpful in you know, creating a, a, a strength in places that can go wrong if you allow them to get weak. Thank you as always for joining us. Hope you really learned something from this. While you're watching TV, while you're on the phone, whatever, use this resistance band. Help yourself. Bless the people around you. Daniel Crouch for the Lifestyle Moment on Know the Cause. As a pharmacist for 24 years, I'm familiar with medications that treat fungus. And they're not only expensive, but they have a lot of side effects, especially harmful to your precious liver. A Brazilian study found out that the natural spice extract curcumin kills 23 different strains of fungus, including Candida albicans. 23 strains! You can buy supplements of curcumin at any health food store nationwide. Friends, there is the product, right? His number one formula, the number two, the fiber I took last night and take just about every night. And there's his probiotic, one, two, and three. And by the way, this little wand, this little stir, I love this little thing. The battery comes with it. That's yours free when you buy all three. So now you know a lot of tummy problems and you now know something to do about it, right? So thank you so much, Jenny Herbacek, for continuing our education, formaldehyde. I kind of thought that. And then wasn't that fascinating about the benefits versus the risks of alcohol? God bless you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.